unlike bigger, heavier vehicles, you can load this onto a, on an aircraft and you can fly it. Um, so you have huge levels of strategic as well as tactical mobility, um, which means if it's a hotspot, but you know, we decide we need to have these vehicles on the ground somewhere in the world, they can be got there within 24 hours. When it you does get look in, like a Nintendo controller, and that's exactly what it is. Wow. Then, if you pull towards you, it will elevate upwards, and if you push away, it will depress downwards. You keep going to the left, and keep keep going, keep going. The system we've got hit, fitted today is the Moog Rip Turret. Um, it's a reconfigurable turret that can have a variety of different effectors mounted onto it. In this case, we've got the high velocity missile uh, from Talis. We've got the 30mm cannon, um, and in this case, configured to fire airburst ammunition as a counter drone effect, um, and the 7.62 machine gun for the in close protection. I'm Toby Cox, uh, Head of Sales at Supercat. Uh, we're a company based down in Devon, privately owned and wholly UK based. And Toby, we're here at the International Armoured Vehicles event in Farnborough, incredible event, and we've got this remarkable piece of kit behind us. What is this? Um, so this is our Armoured Closed Cab HMT vehicle. HMT stands for High Mobility Transport um, and it's an evolution of a vehicle that's been in service with the British Army for over 20 years now. Um, we've taken our latest generation vehicle which is currently being delivered into um, service by Supercat with our production partners Babcock down, who are building the vehicles down in Devonport um, in Plymouth. Um, so we have a modular vehicle um, can be delivered in a four-wheel drive or a six-wheel drive configuration um, but normally we deliver it with an open cab with integral uh, blast and ballistic protection. In this instance we've taken the vehicle, um, we've used the same chassis and running gear from um, below this height um, to give the commonality with existing in-service vehicles but we've co-located the crew into a protected four-person cab. We have seating in the front for the driver and commander and seating in the rear for the um, mission systems operators. Um, as you'll see looking in, um, we have blast protected seating. This um, mitigates shock in the event of a blast event. Uh, you've got the safety restraint harnesses, um, to ensure the occupants are safe, whether it be in that blast event, whether it be in a road traffic accident, etc. So really thinking about occupant safety. And then we've got the ability for those occupants utilising the integrated screens in the vehicle to um, pass information around the vehicle, whether it be between each other, over the communication system or picking up um, information being provided by the mission system. In this particular instance, the mission system we have fitted is a um, ground-based air defence system. It's the Moog RIP turret fitted in this case with um, high-velocity missile, the Bushmaster 30mm cannon and a 7.62mm machine gun. And I'm right in saying that you can actually operate the turret basically off a remote control from the back? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so, but keep, keeping it... Um, can keeping I it current, it? Absolutely. Um, you'll see the very familiar controller. <laughs> when it you does get look in, like a Nintendo controller. And that's exactly what it is. Wow. But Nintendo have spent millions of pounds developing that controller to be ergonomic, um, usable with your hands. When the military bring new soldiers into, you know, through training, it's something that they're inherently comfortable using. Um, in this case, um, when you get in, the screen will show what the weapon system is pointing at. Use the red safety catch with your palm, and then that button there will enable you to rotate and uh, elevate and depress. So, in your hop, foot on the uh, uh, on the upper step. I'm not an expert. The, at getting into you've got a couple of handholds but... here. Give it a go. Oh, look at this. This is so, pretty cool. So when you take hold of that controller, yeah. you will be able to see uh, in your screen mm -hmm. what you're aimed at. Now, one of the other things we've done on the vehicle 
um, is take that image which you're looking at mm -hmm. and both the other crew member in the back of the vehicle and the vehicle commander can also see that image as well. They've got a choice of images they can see on their, on their, um, their, their screen. But what it means is that information, you're not trying to verbally explain to the commander, this is what I can see. Yeah. You can show him or her what you can see. Brilliant. So if I wanted to move the turret, for instance, yep. how do I do that? So keeping your palm on the, the, the red safety catch, yeah. using your right thumb, you uh, can move a joystick. So uh, left and right is obviously left and right. And then if you pull towards you, it will elevate upwards. And if you push away, it will depress downwards. Keep going to the left. And keep, keep going, keep going. You won't quite depress and low enough to be able to see us. There you I go. I see you. So one of the other really major design, design factors of the cab is we've designed it to make sure that occupants from 5% female up to 95% male can sit in there, be safe and operate the equipment. And that's a real challenge because a, you know, you're, you're going from around about five foot, maybe a sh shade underneath it, at the 5% female, to over six foot. And, and how long has this Mark III model been in development? Um, so we did an early iteration of it as a recovery vehicle. Uh, learned a lot of lessons from that. Um, and this vehicle we developed um, last year uh, for the Defence Vehicle Dynamics Show. Uh, where we first showed it, um, it was it took about a nine month process from first um, first concept and first development to have the vehicle to the uh, state you, you you see it in now, but without a mission system fitted, uh, and then we integrated the mission system in about an eight week period uh, prior to Christmas. Uh, and when presumably one day vehicles like this are on the front line. How state-of-the-art will they be compared to what other militaries around the world have? Uh, this vehicle remains completely state-of-the-art. It was a, uh, a class leader when it was introduced into service 20 years ago. It brought in independent suspension um, and, and the performance of the vehicle remains absolutely current. Um, it has an incredibly um, impressive capability to move quickly over, over, uh, in a cross-country environment to not pass those shock loads onto the crew, onto the equipment. Uh, and, and that's incredibly important because when you're sitting in and operating from a vehicle like this, we all know you get in the car and drive you know, three hours up the motorway, you get out feeling a bit stiff and uncomfortable. When you've got to do it for eight, 10, 12 hours at a time, it becomes really important that the vehicle remains very comfortable and doesn't just exhaust you and fatigue you through the loads it's putting onto you. Well, Toby, I'm not going to lie, I quite like it here in the back, but can we hop in the front? Yeah, of course. So, Toby, we're in the front now. Um, this is an amazing setup. Talk us through it. Um, so, we've taken uh, a few key, key things um, that we've learnt in, in the past with our open vehicles is because we've got the commonality, we expect that operators uh, who are trained to use the open vehicles are going to also be using this type of vehicle. We've therefore tried to carry as much across in terms of position of controls, mm -hmm. um, components, etc. over. So it reduces the training burden. You know, when I sit behind the steering wheel here, I want to be able to reach out my hand and put it where I would put it in the open vehicle. Mm. So we've really tried to, to carry those lessons over. Um, you know, we've had maximum use of the same components. Um, we, we have an enormously high level of commonality in this family of vehicles. I liken it to, to a modern car. Mm. You can buy a hatchback, a saloon, and an estate car. They've got a different shaped body, but they're all the same underneath. Yeah. You get in one, you immediately feel comfortable driving the other type. Uh, and that's what we try to do here. We've also been really sensitive to aspects such as the human factors. Can I, sitting in the seat, belted in, reach out and grab that switch? Can I operate it while I'm safely secured? Can I see out of the vehicle? Because if you can't see out of the vehicle clearly, you, you, 
you can't drive your car properly, <laughs> can you? Yeah. Um, so we've kept as much visibility in, in, in the vehicle as possible, yeah, whether it be a big wide screen within the constraints of the armour system, side windows, or in the back, and I'll show you later, we've used a system whereby uh, there's a small TV camera on the outside of a door, and that then puts its image onto a screen on the inside. You don't have that large piece of glass which can get damaged, but you do have the, you know, we still have that awareness. Equally, coming back to the comment I was making about the screens, you know, it's uh, not, 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 not right now, sorry, not in this instance, but you know, we could, if a customer wanted, make the image on that screen also visible for the commander. Ah, so interesting, you, yeah. So, so the situational awareness, you know, people can get, you, know, you don't want to get out of the vehicle when you don't know what's coming. You, you, you might need to see what the threat is around you. Yeah. So we've got that ability to convey the information all the way around the vehicle. Um, additionally to that, built-in communication, so um, headsets for all the crew, so the crew can talk to each other from the headsets, they can talk on the radio system, um, you know, you, and you, know, you can then uh, engage with each other and all being in the same space, you know, good for mutual support. You know, in, in a warfighting environment, it's pretty, pretty intense. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes just being able to look at each other and go, you all right, Bob? <laughs> is a pretty good thing to have. Um, so bringing it all four into the, 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 into the cab is pretty, pretty good. Well, Toby, thank you for showing us the inside. Um, shall we take a quick look at the back? Yeah, absolutely. We'll hop out and um, we'll talk you around the uh, turret in a little bit more detail. Perfect. We envisage that with the vehicle from here back having a flat chassis enables our customers to have one base vehicle platform, but on it be able to use that vehicle for a number of different roles. Uh, for example, in this case with a ground-based air defence system, could be an ambulance um, body, a command and control body, uh, you could have a recovery vehicle on it. So really versatile vehicle uh, to allow the, uh, the fitment. So the system we've got hit, fitted today is the Moog RIP turret. Um, it's a reconfigurable turret that can have a variety of different effectors mounted onto it. In this case, we've got the high velocity missile uh, from Talis. We've got the 30 mil cannon, um, and in this case, configured to fire air burst ammunition as a counter drone effect, um, and the 7.62 machine gun for the enclosed protection. Um, alternatively, the turret can be configured with a anti-armour missile, um, anti-armour piercing rounds in the cannon, um, and, uh, yeah, and keeping the machine gun. So offering the British Army a, syst a turret system that's in service and proven with mm. other nations, um, but able to be re-rolled for various different um, operations. Yeah. Um, one, one of the uh, other key characteristics of a vehicle is, as you see, it's, um, it's only, only a little over two metres wide and um, about a similar, similar height tall uh, and weighs 12,000 kilos. Um, what this means is, unlike bigger, heavier vehicles, you can load this onto a, on, an aircraft and you can fly it. Um, so you have huge levels of strategic as well as tactical mobility, um, which means if there's a hot spot, but you know, we decide we need to have these vehicles on the ground somewhere in the world, they can be got there within 24 hours. You know, it's not a case of bringing in a particularly large aircraft, finding a ship to carry them. The vehicle goes to where it's needed with its crew to then be able to act and provide that, that defensive um, capability. Well, Toby, I must say, it's an incredible vehicle. It's been a, a pleasure to have a look inside it. Thank you so much for, for showing us all about it. Well, James, thank you very much for coming by. And uh, as I say, please come down and visit us. Will do. Thank you. Thank you for watching today's episode of Frontline. For early access to our videos, member-only Q&As and live streams, then sign up for a membership via the link in the description. And for the latest news and breaking stories, listen to Times Radio and follow us at thetimes.com.